repetiram. What's up guys, welcome back. As you can see, I'm back home for my little work trip. Quick little clip here. So I've had the C5 platform now for going on two years, holy cow. And I love this car, I bought this car as an interim between my C7 and C8, but I'm gonna keep it because it's you know, affordable and it's paid off, why not? And I did a like 20 tips and tricks a while ago before I was really acclimated to the car. Having it longer, I wanna do a better 20 tips and tricks, stuff you can probably use a little more. A couple of them are borrowed from the first one, but go into a little more detail. Yeah, this car has a lot of tribal knowledge, if you will, kind of passed down from C5 owners to C5 owners, and hopefully one of these 20 will save you a lot of headache. So, in no particular order, I'm gonna start with one, and they're pretty interesting, and I really think you're gonna learn something. At least one of these you'll find interesting and, and learn from. So we'll go ahead and go to the car and get to it. All right, number one up here with the headlights. When I first got this car, the first six months or so at night, obviously, using the headlights, they had bounced quite a bit, especially going over bumps and stuff. Everyone told me it was the little stops right there. This is actually an extra one you can use if you need to replace the stops when it's up further down. I actually, on a whim, figured out that if you take off this cap right here and just tighten this down, not crazy tight, but tighten it, the wobble goes away. Nice and sturdy. And I feel like every couple of months, it'll kind of get its balance back just a little bit. Come back in here, tighten down a little bit, little motor, good to go. All right, number two, you have to milk your Corvette. You heard me right. Every so often, especially if you drive this thing in the weather, uh, it's got channels here, like any car does. Water flows down in here. I don't know exactly where the channels go on the cow. They do find their way down below. On both sides, behind this little panel right here, you open this up, I'll show you a picture. It looks like a little udder, you see right here. And just clean it out, it looks just like an udder, and they call it udders, it's pretty nuts. But yeah, you'll get debris all kind of stuff clogged in there, and if you don't clean it out, the water will somehow find its way back into the cabin. A lot of times down in the foot wells, people will find collecting standing water, and nine times out of 10, it's because the udders are full of junk and debris. And no, I'm not joking. Open up your C5 and you'll see it. All right, number three, how the gauge cluster is actually illuminated. Outside of the little bulbs for all the little warnings and emergency security light, there is actually no luminescent it provides itself. It's all done via a black light. If you can see it, you can kind of see where my finger is right there. Yep, there it is right there. Both sides has one black light that illuminates the white on the letters and makes it glow. Isn't that wild? Yeah, I thought it was crazy. But yeah, they do not light themselves. It's pretty nuts. In the C6, they are LED, but in the C5, the backlight on the C5 is from two black lights on both sides behind the, uh, the buttons. Pretty nuts. Number four, you find your car hard to shift. I found nine times out of 10 reading forms and even myself. The transmission typically is fine. It's just a problem, especially if you have an aftermarket deal with the adjustment. And most aftermarket comes with a little tool you can use to do the adjustment properly. If this thing's off just a little bit, we're talking one or two millimeters, it will not shift right. Cause this is all linkage. It goes back to your transmission back here. And if it's off just a little bit, the synchros won't do their job right and it'll feel clunky and it'll just feel very not fun to drive your car. So yeah, nine times out of 10, just to adjust lower shifter box for your shifter. That in tandem with do like a clutch fluid flush should be good to go. All right, number five, the C5 Corvette is known for its weird electrical gremlins. I have found nine times out of 10 for anything weird. Uh, so for instance, this not working, or that side not working. It's simply a bad ground or a bad pigtail connection going to its appropriate electrical connection from here to the gauge cluster to this. Nine times out of 10, it's a bad ground and or bad pigtail. And if you look through my library, you'll see quite a few things I found, especially with the doors. My entire passenger door 
stopped working one day. I thought it was the main ground running back to the to chassis. It wasn't. It was simply in the accordion back there the where the connection connects from the main ECU to the door. The little pigtail inside was just worn. I thought to get a little pick out, go inside there, stretch them back out. Boom. Good to go. Number six is the air system. It's a stupid emissions system that no C5 needs. It connects on both sides of your headers. As you can see, mine are blocked off. I got rid of it. Most aftermarket headers, mine did not. Don't even have the option for it right there. And it connects from back here to the other side. And typically you'll see like a little valve right here for it. It's really stupid, it's extra weight. And that's just more things to break. And it goes down inside there to electrical pump, which is kind of underneath your, uh, your headlight here. There's plenty of tutorials online how to do it. Again, it's 15 pounds of extra weight you don't need. Get rid of it, it's more parts to fail. I'm pretty sure it has something to do with California, some emissions crap. Again, if you take it out, you'll get a light. It won't hurt anything, but I do recommend getting it tuned out and then it's gone. One less thing to worry about. And if in case you're wondering, it's something to do. It feeds the catalytic converters until the car is completely warmed up. And then once the car's warmed up, it's just dead weight anyways. It's a really silly emissions thing. And if you have high flow cats or said your cats are tuned out, again, it's just dead weight, so you get rid of it. Yeah, look up the air system. Plenty of tutorials how to get rid of it. Not too hard, but yeah, it's silly. Just get rid of it. All right, number seven. I would say 95% of all Corvettes from when they started this thing, well, early 90s until now, the skip shift situation they use for emissions control as well. The skip shift deal was supposed to just help you save gas. And it's how they got around the gas tax. It's a stupid solenoid in your transmission that makes you shift from first to fourth if you're not aggressive enough. No one likes it. Everyone hates it. I would say most of them are tuned out or have the little module that connects to the skip shift solenoid in the transmission. It's a super easy part to get. There's plenty of tutorials to do it. Now, if you're driving your car and you're not completely irritated by the way it drives from first to fourth, Chances are you're good to go, but if not, if it drives you insane, just do a quick Google search for skip shift eliminator, put the little relay on top of the solenoid, and you are good to go. You can then shift freely, one, two, three, four, etc. All right, number eight, replacement body parts from other cars. Now, in case you're not familiar, the C5 is 99.9%. .9%. It's own unique thing, built from the ground up, outside of parts, bin, radio, and HP controls. This car only shares one external body part with another car, and that is a late 90s Oldsmobile Alero. They share the exact same door handle. So if you happen to find yourself at a junkyard, you need a door handle, there's an Oldsmobile Alero, same color as yours, you're all set. It's kind of weird. I know, it's the only thing shared from any other car is the exterior door handle on a C5, and it cross-references to an Oldsmobile. All right, number nine. This one hopefully should save you a headache if you're trying to do some sound system work. All of the C5 Corvettes, all trims, share the same front speaker setup. However, in the rear, back there, mine's really dirty, I didn't clean that. The FRC and convertible, the rear speakers are five and a half inches. On the coupe, they're six and a half inches. So hopefully that saves you a lot of headache if you're trying to get a speaker set up. And they're not too terribly hard to change out. I have a video on how to do the rear ones. You don't have to take too much apart at all. But yes, just know the rears on the FRC and convertible are a different size than the coupe. I'm sure a lot of people have bought speakers, just whatever. They go to put them in and they don't fit. Well, now you know. All right, number 10 is kind of strange to where the 97, the 2000, the 2001, 2003, and the 04 all have different fuel setups. Meaning the filter is in a different spot, the type of filter, and the crossover tube between the two tanks. So be so make sure you do your due diligence before you do work on your C5. Just make sure you know where the filter is gonna be. If it's in the tank, external to the tank, and it's the right fuel filter. So just keep that in mind. That can be very frustrating. I think the 01 to 03 is the best setup. It's got the external filter right underneath the car. You can see it clear as day. It has the least problems with the crossover tanks. I believe 04 is a headache to work on as far as doing any kind of tank work. But yeah, just keep that in mind. There's three different fuel setups for the C5 Corvette. Frustrating, I know. All right, number 11. I wanna address something else with the headlamps again. A lot of people notice that, especially when they brake, the headlights will dim. 
kind of frustrating. I noticed I changed my battery a while ago to an Optima and I started getting the same thing. I realized that my ground right here wasn't tight enough or the old one I had was stripped out. I replaced it, put a new one in and boom, it fixed my problem. There is the slightest, slightest dimming. It's almost hard to see, but it is there. But for a while it was pretty bad and a lot of people have issues with this. So if your headlights dim when you hit the brake, for whatever reason, the rear tail lights use a lot of juice. I don't know why, but yes, check that ground, go in your battery and your chassis, which is right down there. And if you still get a little bit of dimming, you can swap out your rear tail lights to LED and that should totally rectify your problem. But I've seen this problem on forms since 2004, people talking about this. So it's nothing new, it's just a weird design flaw. People will tell you you need an alternator. Be careful doing that, people have tried that, it makes it worse. The alternators in this car are very specific, so and you can get a beefed up one and a lot of people say the same issue. So again, it goes back to weird grounding issues with this car, but for the headlights, it seems to be the ground to your battery, to the chassis, and to completely get rid of it, the drain on the battery or the alternator, when you hit it, go LEDs in the rear. All right, number 12. Most of you are probably aware that the sub in the doors is proprietary. You really can't swap it out. You can if you change the entire setup, your entire sound system, the AC Delco is very specific. However, so you have kind of a complete system right here with a sub right there and above it you have a three inch tweeter. The tweeter you can change. Just get the same size tweeter, change the polarity and that'll work just fine. But as far as the sub, you are stuck with the AC Delco unless you completely change the amp setup. If you add a external amp to an external head unit the other wire, you're fine, but for a stock setup, you can change the rears just fine, just swap them in and out. Uh, the sub you cannot, but the tweeter you can. You just kind of reverse the polarity and it'll work just fine. All right, number 13 here. Now, if you have a LS1 or LS6, it doesn't matter which one. The good news is 99.9% .9 of the parts are interchangeable from the cam to the heads. And even the sodium filled valves you can change on the heads without changing the heads. If you wanted to, they are a little longer, but they will work. They are sodium filled, so they're a little lighter on the LS6, that is. The throttle body will work. Pretty much everything is interchangeable between the LS1, the LS6. The biggest difference is the LS6 breathes a little better. You can put this plenum on LS1, you can put these heads on LS1. All of the valve train you can swap out, the cam you can swap out. If you find yourself in a junk yard with an LS1 and they have an LS6, you're good to go, or vice versa. If you had an LS6, I'm not sure why you wouldn't do LS1 parts, but if you're in a pinch, you can. All right, number 14, if you got window wobble issues, I did for a while, where when the window was up, you open the door, it would just give me about an inch of play, and I couldn't stand it. Just going through forms, I found out, if you just replace the door panel, or just take it off rather, there's four bolts that connect to your window regulators. That one's about right here, one's about right there, one's down here, one's over here. It's either a half inch or a 15 millimeter. Tighten those down like a son of a bitch, and your window wobble will go away. It's pretty amazing. And it sounds so much better when you open and close it. So that, that's a really useful tip, especially in these old cars. All right, number 15. If you find yourself with a hot or running hot C5, chances are your water pump's fine. You can quickly do a quick coolant check. It's right here, make sure your coolant's full, no big deal. If that's good to go and still overheating and you don't see any signs of coolant leaking on the ground, chances are, because this is a bottom feeder, it's just clogged underneath. As you can see, there's no real radiator feed. It's all underneath the car. Down here, a lot of people just find they have debris, garbage bags, leaves, etc. Just clogging it up. And that's a, it's as simple as that. Get that debris out of there, and your C5 will run a lot cooler. All right, number 16. A lot of people will tell you if you want to put a HUD in your C5 without a HUD, you gotta get new glass, and that is not the case at all. I put a HUD in my C6 1LT and this car with no with no HUD glass. And you can see there, if I can zoom in here for you, it works just fine. It looks a little blurry in the video, but it's not blurry at all in real life. And I've looked at this compared to other friends with the appropriate HUD windshield, and there's almost no difference. So if you want to get a HUD without the HUD windshield, you're fine. Just do it. You will not see a difference. Don't, don't let them scare you. And later on, you can just claim that 
you have a chip in your windshield, get your insurance to cover it, and tell me you got a HUD, and you're all set. All right, so number 17 is not unique to the Corvette or any car, really. It's just a really good tool to have when working in your car, especially with the car door open, and you don't want to disconnect the battery. The easy way to do it is just simply take a screwdriver. You just simply put it right there, like that. Thinks the door is closed. It'll turn off your lights in a second, and then you're good to go to work on your car as long as you need. All right, number 18, your ABS module which can be found right down there. A 97 to 99, you're kind of SOL. When your ABS system shits itself, you gotta get a new one. However, if you have 2000 plus, 2004, you can simply take it out and you can look at playing tutorials online and you can get it serviced yourself with a simple soldering iron or you can send it out, get it fixed and back to you, saves you a lot of headache. So just know that if you have a 97, 99, you will be sourcing a brand new part. If you have a 2000 plus, you can simply get it serviced. All right, number 19 is an amazing tip. I love this, so stay tuned. Now, if you have a speed bleeder, this is an amazing, amazing tip. This is it right here, the speed bleeder that fits to the other side of the slave cylinder. Now, if you don't have a speed bleeder on here, you just have a, a traditional bleeder, you gotta crack it open, and you need two people to do it. So you sit here, you crack it open, they push the pedal, you close it again. It's kind of pain in the ass. Now, if you don't wanna do that, you can use like an old paint can which I do right here. This is the one I use, but just for training purposes, you'll see what I mean. So clean this up really good with some brake cleaner, spray it, get any debris off there, obviously take the cap off, crack it open, half a turn. This would be about halfway full of your dot four. You would just submerge this inside, use some gloves. So this is completely submerged. Open this up, fill it up. You're gonna pump it, fill this back up before it gets too low. Do that a few times. And then every time you push it, when it sucks it back in, it's just sucking back in brake fluid and you don't need anyone else inside the car. Now I do have the type of nipple here where it has a little ball bearing with the spring, but even with that, I still use this method. So it makes sure there's no air in the system at all. It makes it pretty seamless. But yeah, you would fill this up with your brake fluid. You would submerge this, cracked open of course, make sure this is full, pump the clutch a few times, watch this, make sure that doesn't overflow. Do it about four or five cycles, and you should have a completely air-free system all by yourself. All right, and lastly, number 20 is simply, before you take your car to a garage or, heaven forbid, a dealer, do yourself a favor and look on YouTube. Chances are, the problem you have, someone else has already had it. It's on a form. There's a video for it. There's a write-up, and you can save yourself so much money. Now, all the crap I've done in this car, if I didn't know what I was doing, I mean, well, smartest person, but I figured it out. I would have been in the hole like 10 grand, you know what I mean? But most things you can do yourself and save yourself a lot of money. So yes, any little issue you have, just Google it or YouTube it. Chances are, for a little bit of work, a little bit of due diligence, you can figure it out yourself. And for somewhat handy, there's always a walkthrough and you can save yourself a lot of money if you want to. But I also get a lot of people don't want to work on their cars, that's fine. But just be proactive and the forms and you can save yourself a lot of coin. Well, hope you guys found this informative. If I missed anything or if there's something I should make a third one and you want me to include it, put it in the description below and then maybe like a year from now I'll do a number three. Um, I never stop learning on this car. There's always something else to learn. But uh, hope you guys found this informative and let me know if you did. Or if you hated it, let me know. It was the stupidest video you've ever seen. And that's good feedback. Alright guys, go enjoy your Monday. I'll catch you guys later this week for Corvette News. Mark out.